Hi, welcome to Stat Stuff. I'm Matt Hansen. In this lesson, we'll talk about problem statements. Do you know how to build one? Most people I've talked to about this think that they can, but after I reviewed it with them, they're quite surprised at how little they knew about problem statements. Let me start by saying there's no perfect problem statement. Building one is more of an art than a science. But there are some key characteristics that could be very easy for anyone to overlook when building a problem statement. Now, there are a couple of prerequisite lessons that go into more detail about some of the concepts that I'll mention in this lesson, so it may help to review those first. But for now, let's begin by defining what is a problem statement. Well, a problem statement is basically a clear and succinct description of the problem that we're trying to solve. Well, the purpose of the problem statement is that we want to define what those painful symptoms are that are behind those critical pain points that we're feeling within the business. They should also validate the need of the project. That is, when people start asking, why are we even working on this project, the problem statement should clearly answer that question. Also, it's a way for us to be reminded and to unify the team around why they are a part of the project and what role they're expected to play as far as how they're going to be involved in solving this original problem. Well, when you look at a problem statement, there are a few things that we should include or exclude, at least for an ideal problem statement. So we're going to talk about a few of those. As far as for the things that we know should be included within a problem statement, we should at least explain how it is a problem. That is, we should be using clear measurements that define the pain point of the business that we're feeling, that's the symptoms that we're trying to define within this problem statement. Next, we should also explain why it's a problem. That is, we want to understand at least the size of it, the severity, uh, the magnitude for what we're trying to solve, at least, again, in a measurement, hopefully, or at least how it's tied to the CTQ drill down. That is, what are the CTQs, the critical metrics within the organization, and how is this tied to that and why it's so important? Also, we want to explain any key assumptions that might be made within the, the project, or at least key assumption, assumptions we might have in defining this problem statement. That is, if there's something that is a benchmark or a previous study that's been done and we're using that to help explain why we think it's a problem, then state it as such. However, if there are just some general assumptions, again, those should not be stated in the problem statement. But if there's anything critical that helps define part of why we think it's a problem, then we should at least identify that. And also, if it is an assumption, make sure we identify it as such. Finally, something to include is also any relevant information around the problem, only stuff that's really critical for context around the pain point we're trying to define. Now, there are several things we want to make sure we exclude from every problem statement. First of all, defining the root cause. Well, the whole point of trying to even do a Lean or Six Sigma project is because we don't know the root cause yet. If we know the root cause at the time of doing the problem, well, then we probably don't even need to do the define and measure phase. We can jump right to the analysis and pull the data and start analyzing right away. It just doesn't make sense. So if we keep ourselves with an open mind, make sure that the root cause is not identified or we don't try to assume it or identify it within the problem statement itself. Also, any project strategy, how you're going to attack the problem, your steps you're going to go forward in trying to, to solve this problem, make sure you don't include that in the problem statement. I usually like to address those as a separate strategy or laying out my plan for how I'm going to attack the problem. For me, that's something that should not be a part of the problem statement definition itself. Also, proposing the solution. A lot of people try to do this. They think the problem is uh, they quickly assume some of the symptoms and lay out what they need to do to solve it. Well, as we've talked about in the very beginning in understanding Lean and Six Sigma and what methodologies you follow, if you already know the solution, you don't need Lean or Six Sigma. You just go implement the solution. Use your normal project management skills and tools to help implement that solution if you already know what it is. But chances are we don't know what the solution is. So when we're defining the problem statement, we should not include that as solution within the problem statement itself. Also, if there are any risks that are involved, it's important to know the risks and it's important to identify them, but don't do it in a problem statement. Let those risks that are out there be something that we address in a separate notation within the project charter or somewhere else within the project. It does not belong in the problem statement itself. So also, when you're doing a problem statement, I strongly recommend that you keep it very brief. Only three sentences or less, if better. If you can get it down to one sentence, that's ideal as long as you're following all these other inclusions and exclusions. So if you need more context, if you feel like there's a lot more information that you need in defining the problem statement, more background information, then I like to create what I call a background statement. 
Let it, that background statement be something that's separate, that layers the context to define maybe key terms or, or key expectations or processes within the business in order to lay down the proper context for the problem statement. Only again, as long as it's supporting the problem statement, then you think it's critical, then it might be important to treat it as a separate background statement. So if you're doing that, again, keep it separate so that way your problem statement specifically identifies just the symptoms that you're trying to address. So background statements, if you're going to create one, they help explain the affected area, that business area where you're feeling it, and it helps give some of that context that you're looking for. Also, those should be very brief, only about three sentences or less. And as well, they should only contain, again, the context that you're wanting to use in order to explain the symptoms eventually within that problem statement. All right, now let's talk about how you can build a problem statement and test its validity. Well, when you want to build a problem statement, there are a few things that you can draw on to help you in building and crafting that particular statement. So here are some of those things you might use. For example, you might use a CTQ drill down. Again, this drill down is what you can use to help identify where in the business needs and the business values do you see this particular symptom being felt. That's a great way to identify where you, how you can craft your problem statement and identify that, that severity of the pain that's being felt. Also, any existing reports that you might have that include any metrics or targets or goals, uh, those are the things that you might use in identifying any performance gaps. That is, if you know you're performing here at this current state and you know you have to reach this particular goal or target, well, that gap between where you are and where you need to be is a clear definition of a problem statement. So if you have any reports like that, those can be very helpful in that way. Any assumptions, if you know of any assumptions that are out there, they can sometimes reveal at least any certain expectations that are being set by the leadership. So just look for those within the different business area or things that people are making because they can help, again, clarify some certain things that, that might be leading to the, the pain or symptoms that you're feeling in business. Any risks that are out there, those also can be a great source if you're looking for risks or you identify any risks, they can identify some of the urgency or they might uncover any potential benefits that are out there. And also your team, make sure you're working with your team, work with uh, and collaborate with the other folks and include not only the sponsor and champion who help led and are leading this particular project, but especially down to the lower level with the process owner and the subject matter experts, the SMEs. Rely on those people heavily to get what you need in order to understand the full context and help to explain that context of your problem statement. Now, after you've written your problem statement, there are a few things I recommend that you ask yourself. Now, for these different questions, I recommend that you answer yes to these in the sense that if you do answer yes, then you need to go back and adjust your problem statement. If you can answer no to these, then you probably have a good problem statement. So let's start asking some of these. You might ask yourself, does the problem statement include or imply any assumptions? Well, if so, then you probably need to go back and fix your problem statement. Now, this is different than any key assumptions that are because maybe you don't have a clear metric or you don't have a clear measurement that is a, a way of identifying the, the pain point that you want to describe in the problem statement itself. But if there are any other assumptions that are kind of implied, uh, then those things should definitely be removed from the problem statement. Also, uh, is there a solution that you've propo proposed within the problem statement? If so, get that out of there. It has no purpose being within the problem statement. And does it include any information that's not relevant to the problem? Well, if so, then you should just not include it. Maybe it's important to know and it's helpful and you can identify that maybe in an appendix in your storyboard or, or some other area. But if it's not relevant to the actual symptoms you're trying to communicate, get it out of the problem statement then. Also, does it describe the analysis strategy? Does it describe how you're going to try to solve this problem? If it does, then you probably don't want to keep that in the problem statement. Get it out, put it in a separate strategy area or some other description of how you're going to attack the problem. Next. Does it not fully explain the severity of the symptoms? If it does not fully explain the severity, then go back, use some other measurements or ways to explain why this is such a severe issue, why it's so important that really should be included within the problem statement. So make sure you at least communicate that clearly. Finally, you might want to ask yourself, does it presume what the root cause is? If it does, again, it has no, no business being within the problem statement itself. So get it out of there and let the project, as it progresses through the domain, methodology, let that root cause naturally be identified using the data, not just some assumptions that you might have embedded within a problem statement. Okay, now let's go through a couple of examples of building a problem statement. 
Well, for our first example, what we'll talk about is a doctor visit. You can use the example like how I took my daughter Hannah to the doctor in that previous example where we talked about the typical steps we would use for resolving a problem. Well, what are the typical problem statements that you might give to a doctor when you take someone to the doctor or you're visiting the doctor yourself? You might describe exactly the pain point that you're feeling. At least, like for my daughter, we would describe my daughter's been feeling this particular pain. We might explain how long the pain has been felt, the severity of the pain. We might explain there's no thing, nothing that we can identify that led up to that pain. There are no visual symptoms or, or things on the outside that seem to indicate what was causing the pain. We might explain those kinds of things, all again around the pain being felt by her and, and give that information to the doctor as a clearer description. Those are among the critical elements that the doctor probably wants. The doctor doesn't care about all these other things that are irrelevant. The doctor doesn't care if I use the example again of my taking my daughter Hannah to the doctor. The doctor doesn't care about me and what I ate that day. The doctor doesn't care what I did that day unless it's in relationship to my daughter and the pain that she's feeling. The doctor doesn't care necessarily about a lot of these other elements that we might try to feed the doctor because the doctor doesn't care about that. The doctor only cares about the symptoms and understanding the symptoms so the doctor can get to the root cause. Normally we wouldn't do that in a doctor visit anyway. But in the same way, there's no reason for us to do that when we're trying to explain the symptoms in the business. We don't need to go through all this other information explaining around the problem that has nothing to do with the problem. So in the same way, like visiting a doctor, when we only explain those critical elements, the actual pain being felt, we need to do the same thing when we're describing in a problem statement the pain or symptoms being felt within business that we're trying to solve. Like in the doctor also doesn't care about my own opinion. If I've done some research, like if I'm taking the doctor, um, taking my daughter to the doctor, the doctor doesn't care if I've researched online about the symptom and what I think it is and what I think some medication should be given to help her. The doctor doesn't care about that. It's the job for the doctor to help figure out what that root cause is and to use the doctor's expertise and their data to help figure out what's that root cause and help solve the problem. My opinion means nothing to them because otherwise I wouldn't have needed to take my daughter to the doctor if I was able to solve it myself. So the doctor doesn't care about those things. The doctor only cares about what they can assess and again understanding the pain. Well in the same way we should not try to include the root cause, what we think the root cause is, and we should not try to include the solution as part of our problem statement because it has no business being there. That's the point of having the project in the first place to figure out the root cause and figure out what the right solution is. So because of that don't include it within the problem statement itself. Now let's walk through another example. And for this next example, what we're going to do is show a video clip from the movie Apollo 13. Gene, we have a situation brewing with the carbon dioxide. We had a CO2 filter problem on the lunar module. Five filters on a limb. Which were meant for two guys for a day and a half. So I told the doctor. They're already up to eight on the gauges. Anything over 15 and you get impaired judgment, blackouts, the beginnings of brain asphyxia. What about the scrubbers on the command module? They take square cartridges. The ones on the limb are round. <laughs> Tell me this isn't a government operation. It just isn't a contingency we've remotely looked at. Those CO2 levels are going to be getting toxic. Well, I suggest you gentlemen invent a way to put a square peg in a round hole. Rapidly. Okay, people, listen up. People upstairs, handed us this one. We gotta find a way to make this fit into the hole for this. Using nothing but that. Let's get it organized. Okay, okay, let's build a filter. Better get some coffee going too, someone. Now from that video clip. We might want to ask ourselves what's the problem statement that we might use to define their problem that they were facing within that movie. Well there are lots of ways it could be written but here's a suggestion for one possible problem statement that is the lunar module doesn't have enough CO2 filters and the only other filters available are a different shape and won't fit the same hole. As a result the CO2 levels are quickly rising to toxic levels. Now I'm not including any data in this but the fact that I'm identifying that something doesn't fit into the other shaped hole that we would want for the CO2 filter and the fact that it's rising to toxic levels indicates that this is significant. Now if I had more data to explain that with the actual numbers, 
uh, if, I, if that was the audience I was trying to address this to, then that might be important to include within the problem statement without becoming overbearing. But to an audience that is just uh, a lay person like me who has no familiarity scientifically with how these kind of CO2 filters are set up within, within this situation, um, from a generic state, this might be just enough. It gets the point of what is the problem that we're facing and why it's so important. Now, we might also include some other elements that could be helpful, like for a background statement. Some of those things, as an example, could be describing the mission of why they're doing this in the first place, or some of the problems that caused the lunar module to be long, out there longer than expected, or explaining the difference between the filter cartridge shapes, why that even came about. That kind of information is helpful. It's, again, not something that we would normally include within a problem statement, but if we think that it's necessary, at least in given context, then that could be an appropriate background statement. The background statement typically would come first if we think that's important for laying out the context. Then after that is when we identify the problem statement where we get specifically describing the pain that's being felt in the situation. So let's use one more example. In this other example will say that we're trying to compare the scores for customer satisfaction or what we call CSAT. The CSAT scores between two different sales regions. Well, in this particular scenario, let's say that there's an executive who's asking why is it that one sales region has much worse CSAT scores than a similar region. Now, this is actually based off of a similar project that I worked in the past. And based off of this, the executive was comparing these two different regions and assuming that the region should be performing about the same. So what are some of the questions that you think you might ask? If you were approaching the executive and, and they'd ask you this question, what are some of those things you might ask to help you in building the problem statement? Well, here are a few examples that could help you. You might ask the executive, well, what are the similarities and differences between the two sales regions? Also, what are the historical CSET scores and the trends for both of those sales regions? And how is the CSET data collected? How is it scored and how is it calculated? And finally, what's the financial impact, if there is any, if you're going to have a lower CSET score? And how is that financial impact calculated? Possibly, if an executive comes to you and asks a similar question like this, these could be the types of questions that you can ask of that executive. Generally, they're not going to have the answer, but hopefully they can point you in the right direction of who to ask. But understanding these types of questions could be something that's critical as you try to build the problem statement to really understand what problem exists and how you can describe again the severity and pain point being felt within this business area. All right, before we close this lesson, let's discuss how we can apply some of these concepts in a practical way. What I'd like you to do is identify at least three different projects or issues that you've worked in within your organization. Now, the scale of these projects, they don't have to be huge. They don't have to be necessarily lean or Six Sigma projects. Just think of any problems or things that you worked on, at least three different things like that, within the recent past of your organization. What I'd like you to do is identify what's the problem statement for each one of those situations. Again, it doesn't have to be a huge situation, big context for a project or anything like that. Even if it's something small, try to identify at least what is the problem statement for each of those situations. If one wasn't identified, then just create one. And then for each of those problem statements, ask yourself those six questions so you can test the validity of that problem statement. For example, does it include any information that's not relevant to the problem? Or does it propose a solution? Or does it include or imply any assumptions that aren't relevant to explain the severity of, this, of the symptoms being felt? Or does it describe the analysis strategy that should not be included? Or does it fully explain the severity of the symptoms? I'm sorry, does it not fully explain the severity of the symptoms? And does it presume what the root cause is? If you find that you answer yes to any of these questions, then how is it that you might change the problem statement? Try working through that. Try crafting your problem statement into a way that at least addresses these kinds of issues to include the things it should and exclude the things that it should not include. And that way you can work on trying to practice and building a problem statement because it is, as I said earlier, more of an art than a science. Well, that wraps up this lesson. Check out statstuff.com for many more resources that can help you achieve powerful results. I'm Matt Hansen. Thanks for watching.